to kind of go back to Paul Saladino. Mm -hmm. uh, he was talking, I was listening to him talk about the Randall cycle and how it's something that's not, not something that's of concern to him and he doesn't worry about it. Uh, I heard a lot of people in the carnival space kind of talking about the Randall cycle, how it can be quite damaging. Do you want to just um, kind of explain the Randall cycle and whether we should be worried about it or not? Yeah, so the, the Randall cycle is something I think discovered in like the 1970s. Um, it's something that um, people like Professor Bart Kay has done uh, a few videos on. They're, they're very, very good. and goes into the exact mechanisms of that if people want us an, an in-depth look at that. But basically what it says is that if, you're, if your cell is being you know, flooded with an abundance of energy you know, by you know, carbohydrates or fat, it's going to say, okay, that's enough. We're going to protect ourselves and we're going to, we're not, instead of having an uh, overabundance of this and, and gumming up the works of the cell and the mitochondria, it, it shuts it down and makes it the barrier resistant to, um, to fat and carbohydrates coming in. And so they'll stay in the circulation and they have to get stored in as fat as well. So the, the argument is, is that if you're eating carbohydrates that will shut off your, um, your cell to, uh, other, you know, to fats. And then, so that fat, instead of being used as energy, will then just go into, uh, fat storage. And if you're, uh, again, you know, cutting things off, it also will stop the, uh, allowing carbohydrates from coming in the cell as well. And, um, and that will raise your blood sugar. And this can be maybe seen as, as insulin resistance as well, because this is, this is telling insulin, like, Hey, we're not going to listen to you. Um, I think there's probably a combination. I think that, you know, people do, even when they stop eating carbohydrates, it does take a while for their body to normalize and become, uh, you know, more sensitive to insulin. So that's something that, you know, in practice, you know, I've seen it just take a little while for people to, uh, to bounce back from, but they, they can, and they all, most of the time they do, um, you know, sometimes people, if they've been, you know, uh, type two diabetic for a long time, they may not be completely able to make and maintain their own, uh, insulin. They may need a bit of insulin, but, but the sensitivity comes back, you know, uh, they don't have to take, um, copious amounts of, of insulin or other medications to try to you know, force energy into cells and their blood sugars is very, very well controlled after that. So, um, yeah, so that, that's sort of the Randall cycle in, in a nutshell is that if you start taking in a bunch of carbohydrates, it can just sort of, uh, gum things up. Mm. So do you reckon if there's someone that, you know, has gone more animal based like Paul Saladino and you're not going as crazy as him, how he's having, you know, two to 200 to 400 grams of carbohydrates. But if you're only having 50 grams of carbs, cause you just want to try and get a really good workout in one day, do you think just a little bit of carbs is kind of going to make this process happen and you're going to get fat or hmm. how do you like practically, do you think it's something to worry about? Yeah. Well, I think, I think from my, from my point of view, I think what's more uh, important is that first of all, high blood sugar is dangerous. It, it damages your body. So the glucose molecules physically fuse to other molecules in your body and damage them. Uh, fructose actually does this independently and does it uh, harder, does it worse. And so that, that's what kills diabetics. This damage, this direct damage to your body from high blood sugar, chronically high blood sugar. So your body tries to defend this by raising your insulin and insulin disrupts a lot of your, your metabolic processes and, and, and screws with your, your, your biochemistry in a number of different ways. And so that's, that's a problem that I see uh, with, mm. with eating carbohydrates, even a small amount is that you're going to get that insulin spike and that's going to sort of derail your body's uh, metabolism. And, and, um, when your insulin goes up, it forces energy into cells. It doesn't allow it to come out of cells and it will actually lock down your fat cells. So it blocks proteolysis, it blocks lipolysis. So now all that energy that you've taken in is now locked in your fat cells and you can't actually use it for energy. So then you sort of get tired. You feel, don't feel very good. Then you have to eat more carbs to sort of wake yourself up. And this is where we start chasing our tail with, uh, eating carbohydrates. And so maybe you'll get like a bit of a boost when you're working out, uh, but it, 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 it won't last too long and, and you'll end up crashing and then your insulin stays up because insulin stays up for a long time. It has a long half-life and, uh, and you won't be able to make 
energy very well. Now people say like, oh, well, you'll get a better workout if you eat carbohydrates. I've, I've never found that myself. I've actually found quite the opposite. I've found that when I don't eat carbohydrates, I feel much better because my body's making carbohydrates. I have carbohydrates in my body. I have blood sugar. I have liver glycogen. And when I'm working out, when I'm pushing myself, my body actually uh, triggers my body to, to secrete more energy and burn more energy, which actually makes me feel better, which makes me work out harder, which makes me burn more energy, which makes me feel better. And, it, and it's this positive feedback loop. And I feel better and better. And, you know, speaking about, you know, professor Finney, um, I saw him at a conference, a uh, medical conference over in the gold coast last month. And he was talking about, uh, research that they had done, uh, you know, actual controlled trial where they had, you know, two, two groups, one in, uh, you know, fat adapted ketosis and the other just eating normal carbs and everything like that. And they track their workouts, they track their exercise performance and everything like that. And, and how much oxygen they were using their you know, respiration rate, metabolic rate, and all these different markers. And they found that they, uh, you know, you didn't get an advantage from eating carbohydrates. They're, they're basically about the same. Um, then interestingly enough, they switched the groups. So they had all the groups that were fat adapted and keto uh, started eating carbs. And the people that were eating a bunch of carbs, you put them onto keto, you had them on there for like, I think it was like 40 days, 42 days or something like that. And then they started testing them again. And, uh, and again, they found that, that you could go back and forth uh, without issue. So you, you didn't need carbohydrates. And uh, this is obviously Professor Tim Noakes, uh, who used to be all about, oh, you got a carbo load, carbo load, you need carb to burn carbs. He was that guy. He made that very popular, you know, back in the seventies and eighties and, uh, and onwards. And now he's done a full reverse. He's like, oh my God, I, I got it completely wrong. Um, it was, it was absolutely backwards. Or maybe that was, no, sorry. That was, that was, that was Noakes who that did that experiment. Sorry. that wasn't, that wasn't Steve Finney. That was Noakes that did that uh, exercise tolerance test. So, um, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of evidence for that. So I find that I would just work out a lot better, you know? So if you're eating carbs, you sort of have to keep eating carbs in order to maintain your blood sugar and your energy levels. But if you don't eat carbs at all, your body does it for you. And I, I think that's much more efficient way of doing it.